G'day guys, my name is Trent, aka Laxlime, bringing you week 5 of the Pokemon Global League. This week we are up against the Portland Turbo Blazers. The head coach is Ian, his link as always will be in the description below. Um, Ian actually has a pretty strong team, uh, I was a little bit nervous about it. My main concern is actually that Umbreon because there's nothing I have that can actually Oko it. So I knew it was going to be a bit of a problem so I had to play pretty smart around it. But uh, I think I built a pretty solid team to take him out and uh, you know what? We'll just go into it and see how we go. So I decided to lead off with Rotom as he goes into his Tornadus. Now, I sort of expected that he'd lead off with his Tornadus. I just had this feeling for some reason. Uh, so this worked out really perfectly for me. Also, Rotom sort of walls most of his team or does a good job at damaging or walling most of his team. So unfortunately, the Thunderbolt's not enough to take it out. Uh, I decided to stay in and just go for another Thunderbolt. He does switch out there. Um, like obviously he's got two regenerators on his team which is slightly irritating and uh, that Thunderbolt does nothing, nothing to that Umbreon which is super unfortunate. Uh, the only thing I really got to take out this Umbreon is Keldeo with the Secret Sword. He does go for the Protect, pretty much revealing at this point that he will be the Wish Protect Stall 1 which is... I really don't like fighting Umbreons, <laughs> you really don't. Uh, it does that does a significant amount of damage, but obviously not enough damage to to take it out. Uh, I've really really got to get this thing down to like 50%, and then I'll be able to take it out. But getting it to the 50% range is the hardest bit. Uh, staying in, knowing that he's going to go for the protect, then uh, it basically gives me an opportunity to get some damage off on something that he decides to switch into next. I do go for the sacred sword, um, but he does switch out and go into his slowbro David. Uh, David is going to be a little bit of a problem as well. I have prepared for David um, with Caldeo because pretty much his safest bet is to go into um, David when I bring in Caldeo. So I have, I'm have i running uh, Hidden Power Electric on it, but uh, it only does about 60%, so I have to get it down to like 50% to make sure that I take it out. So that is my plan, but I've also got Shaman. Shaman can come in do what he needs to do. Uh, I'm carrying Leech Seed on Shaman, so I've got to just get a Leech Seed up. Uh, it was my best bet for this David and just try to, you know, chip damage all of his walls. The Leech Seed really is there just to chip damage all his walls and annoy him. Um, he goes for a slack off. I guess he was trying to work out how much a Giga Drain was going to do. Um, it, it won't do too much after the, after the plus one. Uh, but I do go for the Giga Drain on the next turn. It does not much and not a significant amount as he goes for the Psychic. I am fully specially defensive on Shaman, so I can eat that up. It's not a problem whatsoever. Even if he has Ice Beam, it's not going to do too much damage. Uh, but if he keeps on Car Mining, it might be a little bit of a different story. Uh, this is going to be a really, really stally battle. Uh, and I sort of, when I saw his team, I knew it was going to be a bit of a stally battle. Um, it's a little bit. Like, yeah, it was it was a little bit annoying. Um, Stooly sort of battles are the ones that I really, really struggle with because I start making some silly plays, but I was trying to keep really cool-headed. Uh, I know in the first season or even any other, like, um, league I've been in, as soon as I get stalled, I end up being 6-0'd or really, really badly beaten. So I'm trying really hard to keep a level head. Uh, Gentect, I've not really versed one before, so I was really, really hoping that it wasn't going to be a Choice Specs one, but I wanted to see how much it was going to do to an Ice Beam. I knew an Ice Beam wouldn't kill, um, but I really wanted to know how much it was going to do. I decided to switch out here, go into Rotom, because Rotom is my best bet, because he is going to go for another Ice Beam, and I will just completely eat that up. Uh, I am in the position now where um, I can sort of just freely hit... Uh, Hydro Pump and sort of see how much damage it is. I don't think he can really do too much to me, but he decides to switch out and go into Garchomp. I am thankfully able to hit that Hydro Pump. I am so unlucky with Hydro Pumps. Like, if there was one move that I hate using, it's Hydro Pump, because I always, always miss him, especially in crucial moments, and it upsets me. Uh, he does go for the Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rocks is going to be a little bit annoying, as I just go for the Will-O-Wisp. I've only really Will-O-Wisp him. I know he's a defensive, but also, like, it's still going to do, a, like an Earthquake is still going to do a significant amount of damage to the um, Meta Metagross. So I'm trying to think about that in the in the end as he goes for the Toxic. Um, initially I was a little bit annoyed about this Toxic because Rotom really, really needs to be around to, uh, to wall his team. But it ended up being like a little bit good for me in the long run. Uh, 
I'm just gonna go, at this point, just go for another Will-O-Wisp. He's already down really, really low. It's sort of just in case he decides to switch out or, or anything. He does make that switch out as he goes into his Umbreon. This is why I mean Toxic worked out right for me because I'm able to actually get a Will-O-Wisp and because of the Synchronize, I, I obviously can't be burned because I'm toxic um, so that was, yeah, that worked out really well for me. Uh, it's still, like, the, the Toxic is going to take its toll, especially on, on Rotom, because I really, like, Rotom's the only thing that I could have to really take out that Tornadus and, um, be able to wall it out, except for, like, Meta Metagross can probably come in and do it, but, like, I, I kind of want to keep it at pretty high HP. I do go for the Thunderbolt, the, the Volt Switch, sorry, and switch out, uh, and then, obviously, I need to go back into Caldeo to, to do some, do some damage. I really, really wanted to, to set up on this thing. Um, I did bring Metagross with Home Claw. Uh, if I can get plus one, and um, I can pretty much just ruin his team. But uh, I was really worried this thing would have a foul play, because that would, like, a foul play on Metagross would probably most, like, bring it down fairly, fairly low. He does go into his, um, the Garchomp here, uh, pretty much to sack it off, I'd say, as I just go for the Sacred Sword, because it is my safest play. Uh, the Garchomp is down. Which is good, um, and he decides to go into his tornadoes at this point. Um, I need to set up like priority is really I need to set up some rocks. Uh, if I can get some rocks up, then this thing won't be too much of a threat. Um, as well as like it, yeah, it will be easy to deal with. Uh, he does get a crit on that hurricane, which is really annoying. Um, but he does decide to actually switch out here. Um, I like it. Yeah, he probably just wanted the Regenerator boost again, and he can easily go into Umbreon and uh, wall me out. So, yeah, that's like that's pretty much the best play. Um, I do decide to just go for the Volt Switch here. I needed to switch out. Uh, like, he's probably going to wish anyway and get back up to full HP. I want to switch out. I need to really, really keep the pressure on him. Um, with the pressure there, he may, you know, I don't know, make a silly play or something. But I needed to make sure that I just keep on bringing the, the, the physical pressure towards him. Um, so I do go into Shaman. Uh, Shaman basically is here. I want to Leech Seed him. And then um, with the Leech Seed, it's going to make it a little bit easier to take him out. Because although, like, for his Protect moves, he's still going to be losing, losing um, HP. So it sort of works. Um, he does go for the tech there, obviously, to get his wish off. As I just go for the leech seed again. Um, as I said, really, really stally, uh, especially with all the leftovers going on. Um, I am sort of tossing up at this point as well. I was really, really thinking I need to probably bring in Uxie. I want to set up some some rocks um, as a sort of a priority, and then um, when I've got the rocks up. I can sort of see if the Umbreon has the foul play. Um, Shaman's not going to stick around. I do hit the Leech Seed up there, but Shaman's can't stick around and take any damage from this uh, Tornado, so I have to switch out. And uh, this is sort of like my best opportunity to sort of... Like, I've got to bring in Rotom. Pretty much to sack it off at this point, but he ends up missing the Hurricane, which is really good. I guess it makes up for the crit um, beforehand. Uh, Leech Seed's still up, so I'm getting some, some Leech up, some chip damage, um, and then as well as, uh, the leftovers. But, you know, Toxic takes its toll, obviously. He does decide to switch out here, as I just end up going for the Will-O-Wisp, I believe. Uh, which works again, because he does bring in Umbreon. The Will-O-Wisp is, although it's not really going to do anything because of, the, um, the Heal Bell, it just does mean that he has to waste a turn to use the heal bell, so it means I can get extra damage off, and he can't wish protect and do all of that annoying stuff that he's been doing. Um, um, but, 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 Volt switch out. Um, I believe from here, this is where I actually decide to bring in the uh, Yuxi. Um, rocks up priority, and then see if he's got foul play, because I just want to make sure he's got. If he's got the foul play, then I can't. Um, I can't bring in Metagross and set up on him. So that was sort of my plan. Um, he does end up actually revealing the, the foul play, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, as I, yeah, like, I really, really just wanted to get rid of this thing. And uh, this is what I mean by when I get stalled, I start making some silly moves. Um, I do go for the knockoff. Uh, I wanted to get those leftovers off as well. Um, at this point, I just wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, 
So I decided to actually go for the U-turn and switch out into, um, what's he called? What's he called? The Salamance. Now, I knew foul play was going to really, really hurt. Um, I didn't take in the rocks into consideration. I knew it was going to take me down to the red. I didn't take rocks into consideration. So luckily enough, I survived that. And I really thought that brick break would kill. Um, it doesn't. It leaves it with like a slither of health. And uh, obviously foul play will take me down. I was really disappointed about that play because it is scarfed and the scarfed um, Salamence could, would have really, really come in handy towards the end of the battle. Or potentially could have come in handy in terms of the battle, um, especially with like a late game, uh, like a late game sweep or just in case something, he's got something. Like the game, the Genical Sect could really, really damage me. And at least if I got the, the, um, the scarf, it would have been really, really useful. He does go into the Gen Sect now, um, as I believe I just start going for the the, uh, the Leaf Seed and then Air Slashes, um, just to pretty much take this thing out. I needed to get rid of it. Um, he can still do a significant damage, amount of damage for me, but after hopefully the Leaf Seed plus the leftovers and everything, I can sort of stay in a little bit longer. Um, it does reveal he has a Flamethrower, so um, yeah, that's a little bit scary for the, the Metagross in the back, but after one more... One more hit, um, Gensect is down, so Shaman gets his, I think, like, the first kill, really. Um, yeah, so from here, it's pretty much getting to a point where the game, like, I need to sort of finish up the game and not get so stalled, so I start playing a little bit more, like, I want to start playing a little bit more aggressively to, to take out the rest of the game. So Rotom comes in, it's basically there to get a free switch into... Um, I believe the free switch into uh, Metagross. So Metagross, I've got Ice Punch on Metagross, so I know that Hurricane's not going to do. I'm fully um, invested in HP, so it's not going to do super too much amount of damage. But he does um, end up switching into his Mega Tri Tyranitar, um, gets his Sand Stream up, and as I just go for the Ice Punch, it doesn't it doesn't do like too much damage. Um, yeah, the Ice Punch doesn't do too much damage. Uh, I sort of was tossing up there, it was like a roll for Bullet Punch, but I was a bit too nervous to make it, and I knew the safer play would be going to Caldeo, because he'll probably go for the Crunch, um, and with the Crunch on a Caldeo, it's not going to do too much damage, considering it's resisted, uh, and then I know that uh, a Surf actually can damage most of his team from this point, um, or a Secret Sword, uh, especially, I think... Because the rocks are up, I believe that Umbreon's pretty low on HP at this point as well. So, yeah, I end up going for the uh, the uh, the, the uh, Surf at this point um, because David comes in and you know takes decent chunks to the Surf, and this is the perfect point to use um, Hidden Power Electric, which is he'll definitely be at range. I really forgot here at this point as well. If um, I was actually really nervous because I couldn't remember if the the sand would cause the the hidden power electric to be reduced. Um, I don't know. I really couldn't remember. But uh, David is down. Caldeo has got another kill. At this point, he is going to switch in his uh, thunderous or tornadoes. I, I, I always forget what these things are called. They drive me insane. Um, that's alright, Caldeo needs to come back out, and I decide at this point that Yuxi can come in, I can just sack Yuxi off, it's not it's not really much of a big deal, and then I can bring in the, the Metagross uh, at this point and pretty much clean up the game. So, Metagross does have Ice Punch, Ice Punch is going to obliterate this guy, and um, I'm pretty sure Bullet Punches are pretty much all I need to do from, from the, the end of the game, so... I do end up missing the hurricane. It wouldn't have made a difference anyway because I would have done like 30%, I believe. I capped as a spec onto the Metagross. Uh, yeah, so now because of the, the rocks, uh, the the rocks, the bullet punch is definitely going to kill. So I decided to go for bullet punch just in case he's like uh, fully special, um, speed invested and I didn't want to take any damage whatsoever. And then the uh, Umbreon comes in, and then he will go down to rock. So Yuxi will actually get a kill in this battle. But uh, yeah, pretty intense battle. It took, it, it was a long battle, like a really, really long time. I think it was like 45 turns. But uh, I did end up taking the victory. It was a 3-0 in my favor, which is really good for differential. I don't really know 
I don't really even know where I'm really sitting on the, the tables. But I also believe after that, uh, Metagross may, may be the top of the MVP list. It is a really big threat, Metagross. I'm, I'm really lucky I picked it. I sort of was, when I was picking my team, I was like, you know what, Metagross will be so good. Um, and no one else picked it, so I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, it was an Uber, but yeah, it, it works well. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, you know, share, do all those wonderful things, and I will catch you guys next time.